In this video, you will see a demo of the application library management system which is built using React. And I'm using Supabase for the application database. So let me log in with valid credentials. Once logged in, we can see a list of all the available books. We have pagination also which we can use to navigate between pages. We can also search by any column value. Let me enter text of book. As you can see, we get six matching results containing the text of book. You can search by any of the fields and not just book name. So if I search by text, S-E-U-S-S, you can see we get one result with matching author. Now I can also click on the student link and see information of student to which the book is issued. We can also click on this link to see all the books assigned to this Charlie student. As you can see, this student has a total of nine books assigned, so we can see all the information of each book with issued date also. We can also click on the edit icon to edit a particular book. You can see all the information about the book along with book image. Now I can update any information and click on update book button. You can see a nice toast notification and we're redirected back to dashboard. And the latest updated book is displayed on the top. I can also click on add book menu to add a new book. So let me enter some book information. We also have form validation here as you can see. So all the fields are required here, except image. Image is optional, so you don't have to add it. Let me enter all other details. I will select image for this Dear Zoo book. If I click on add book, you can see the book is getting added. We can see book is added successfully. If I go back to dashboard, you can see the Dear Zoo book is added. As we have just added this book, if I click on the student link, you will see toast notification saying that the book is not yet assigned to any student. If I click on edit, I can see information about that added book and I can update any information if needed. So I can update this book name also. I will add updated text and you can see the updated book title is displayed on the dashboard page. But I don't want that to be updated, so let me revert it back. As this book is not yet assigned to any student, I can click on Issue Book menu to assign it to any student. I will select Dear Zoo Book, and as we have a lot of students, we can see a nice scrollable drop down with list of students. We can also search any student by name. So if I enter Charlie in the search box, you can see matching result displayed. I can select Charlie and click on the Issue Book button. You can see the book is successfully issued to Charlie. Now I can go back to the dashboard. For Dear Zoo Book, click on Student Link, and now you can see this book is assigned to Charlie. We can also see that in the list of books assigned to Charlie. Now we have 10 books assigned to Charlie with latest assigned book displayed on the top. So we can see student information as well as all books assigned to that student. Now on the student list page, we can see all the information about student with student ID, city, phone, and all other information. Here also we can click on the books link and see the list of books assigned to that student. I can also edit the student to update any of the information about student. Each student will get the unique student ID which is generated automatically. I will add middle name for this student, and when I click on Update Student button, you can see the details updated successfully. I can also delete any of the student. As you can see, Jane is now deleted. So if I search by name Jane, you can see we don't get any result because that student is deleted now. Let me add a new student now. As you can see, we have form validation added and all the fields are required here except middle name field.
We also have phone number validation with 10-digit value. So once we add exact 10-digit phone number and click Add Student button, you can see student is added successfully. Now I can go back to student's list page, and as you can see, the latest student is displayed on the top. And also it does not have books assigned as were created this student just now. Now let me go to issue book page and I will assign the brown bear book to the student with name Hank. If I click on issue book button, you can see book is successfully assigned to Hank. Now I can go to student's list page and if I click on books link, you can see the recently assigned book information displayed. As I'm using React Query Library for fetching the application data, we get added benefit of caching, and data automatically gets updated when there is any change. So we don't need to manually refresh the page to see the updated information. So when we switch between different pages, we get the updated data immediately without any loading indicator, which is good for performance improvement. Now in the Return Book section, we can return any of the issued book. If the content is larger, we get this nice scrollable dropdown. So let's say we have that Charlie student and he has issued a total of 10 books as you can see here. Now let's try to issue one more book to the same Charlie student. As you can see, we're getting error because each student can receive a maximum of 10 books. This count is configured in the database. So in the books underscore settings table, we have set the maximum count to 10, which we can change if we want. So currently each student can get maximum of 10 books, and if he want more books, then he need to return one of the previously issued book to get a new book. So let's again see the list of books issued to Charlie. Let's say Charlie wants to return this giraffe's can't dance book. So we can go to return book screen, search for the giraffe's can't dance book. As you can see, the book is issued to Charlie. We can click on return book, which will take the book back from Charlie. Now as the book is returned, we can go back to issue book and issue a new book to Charlie. You can see the book is successfully issued. Now as the book is assigned, we don't see that book in this list again. Now with this new book issued, Charlie has a total of 10 books again. So if we try to issue one more book, we will again get error, indicating we cannot issue more books to him. We also have student analytics page. So the Charlie has student ID of SDU21. So if I enter that here, you can see we get list of only seven books issued in this particular date range. As we know, Charlie has total of 10 books issued, but in this date range, there are only seven books issued. So we see only list of seven books. So let me select date from month of February to June today's date. Now you can see we get list of all 10 books. Now we can go to books chart page and enter student ID of Charlie. You can see we get a nice bar chart indicating the months in which the student received the books. So we can click on any of the bar and see information of books assigned in that particular month. So this book is assigned in March 23rd. In May, there were two books assigned. So I can click on bar and see the information of books assigned. If I click on June month bar, you can see there are seven books assigned in June. If I check for student ID 22, you can see there are three books issued to David in June month. Now let me log out from the application. As you can see, there is no way to register a new user because only admin can register users to manage this library management system. So for that, we can go to the Supabase authentication section. As you can see, there are two users added who can log into the application. So admin can send email invitation to login or manually create a new user by adding real email address and new password. We also have reset password functionality where you can reset your forgotten password. Once clicked on the link, you can enter your email address and click on reset password button. You can see the toast notification for email sent with the reset password link. Now we can click on the reset password link from the email and enter a new password to be updated.
And once we click on Update Password, the password will be updated and we will be automatically logged in to the application. So that's how we can reset password if we ever forget it. For building this application, we're using React with Supabase as the database, and we're also using ShadCN UI, which is a component-based library to quickly add components using Tailwind CSS framework for styling. And as we're using React, we can host this application on any hosting provider like Netlify, Versal, AWS, or any hosting provider of our choice without worrying about paying extra for bandwidth or images or number of requests. So that's it about this application demo.